Hello, it's Andrea from Chasing the Whimsy. I had a request to show a little quick tip on adding elements in and what I do to blend edges a little bit better. These are things I almost always do with anything that I add into an image that wasn't there. And so I'm just going to quickly show you um, just a couple of those things that should make a big difference in how you get something to blend in. Um, so this image, um, I've done nothing to it. This is pretty much out of camera, but I'm just going to, I'm not doing anything to the image. I just want to show you what I would do if, when I start putting in creatures or uh, whatever other elements I'm putting in. And I usually do it at the stage before I do any of my dodge and burn or any of those things. I, I piece together everything that I want in the image. Then I work on blending all the colors and stuff together before I start any of the finishing things, just so I have everything sort of blocked in where I want it. It makes it a whole lot easier to do it that way. So I have this little bunny He's from Photographers Unleashed. She has a Spring Bunnies package, and so this is one of the ones in there, and I use him a lot. I just really like his his look. But you can see, even just on here, he's a little fuzzy. He's got not, you know, perfect, it's not perfectly cut out along the edge here. That's fine, because you can, uh, there's things you can do. You can even see a tint of green, like he was probably sitting on grass or something when he was cut out. So there's some things we can do to improve that easily, or fairly easily when we get him in. So basically, I dragged him into this image over here. And so here he is, and he's on his own layer, which is important with anything that you add in, have it on its own layer, so you can be working with shadows and things beneath them, and you can apply clipping masks on any of the adjustments that you might do to those creatures. Um, and then I'm actually, he would be placed down here, but that makes no sense in this picture. I'd have to add some moss or something down here because obviously that's the pond. But I just wanted to show you that for placement wise, like if you look at her eyes where she's looking, she's looking basically down at this rock here. So you, know, you wouldn't place the bunny here, over here is too far. You want to kind of judge right where she would be looking at him and that's where you would place him if you're going to put him there. I'm not going to worry about where he's actually placed in here. I'm actually going to sit him up here in the mushroom because I want you to be able to see better what I'm going to do with his edges and things to make him blur or to blend in a little bit better. Just these couple little tricks. When I do my full compositing series I'll have a whole lot more about this kind of blending but I just wanted to show you some quick things that you may be able to use right away that should help with your blending. So the first thing I would do is want to clean up that green tinge that's there. You could try doing a selective color change there, but I would just tend to just mask it off and just kind of bring it in a little closer. So I would just, here's my bunny layer, I would just put a mask on that and then with a brush at about 20% opacity, just a small soft brush, I would actually just kind of start flicking in here and just taking that green out. As you can see I'm just getting, I'm not too worried what it looks like because he's got fur and in fact you could even do this with a brush that was um, that would make it look hairy like if you had used a grass brush or something like that you could actually I'm just kind of flicking in I could even make it smaller kind of flick in and make it even look like hair but I just want to sort of brush around that edge and just get some of that green out of there so I would do that all the way around him I won't fuss with that I just want to show you this quickly do part of it here. So something like, I think Photoshop just has a regular grass brush. I'm just going to see if I can find it quickly here. Show you which one I mean. It's one that's like three little strands of grass. Well, let me draw you a picture of what it looks like. It, um, it's a, little, it's a little brush that looks like this, and if you grab that and make it really small and kind of, especially if you have it so that it twists all around different things and you bring that into the edges, you can actually get kind of a hair, a hair look on the edges like that, which is great for fur. Anyway, so I would go all the way around this bunny, getting rid of that uh, green, a little bit of green that's showing. Okay, I won't finish it all the way around, but just wanted to show you that. And then from there I would start doing, you know, his contrast adjustments and I'd probably sharpen him a little bit, all that. Again, I'll show all that when I do my actual compositing on how you're blending in things that you're adding. But this is just a video on an edge trick or two, a trick that I almost always do um, to help something blend in. I sometimes even do this on, you know, if I add in a different wing or something on my fairies, maybe I'm adjusting a wing or even if I do something different in the background that doesn't seem to be quite blending, I can do that around my actual image as well. But when you have something in like a bunny like this, my little trick is to go to your, um, the, the finger point that has the blur, sharpen, and smudge. And if you actually go to the blur tool that's on the top, 
at 100% strength, and I do it fairly small, just zoom in like just a little bit on the edge like that, and then I actually run that blur tool just along the edge. Again, when, if he was sharpened, like he's already kind of blurry himself, so this is not showing you exactly how this will work, but once he, you've done all the work and his contrast adjustments and then colors and anything that you might do, this just, it's so subtle and yet it can make a huge difference to how they blend in with the background because it's kind of grabbing what's on either side. You can do this, you know, even at the end, if you, you know, you do, you do this once and you find out you're kind of done your image, you're looking back and going, that doesn't blend very well. You can run around your edges again, even after it's all flattened and whatever, and that'll pull some of your background along it as well in to blend because the blur tool is kind of grabbing what's around on either side and smushing them together and that's why you get a nice blend but it really helps when you have an image that you're uh, you know an article um, not an article an uh, element that you've put in that's a different contrast level or something this running the blur tool around like this makes a huge difference in how it looks for its realism in blending in I don't know how well you can see that, I guess, and he's, he's fuzzy, but already a fuzzy bunny. Um, so that is one of the cool cool little things that I pretty much always do when I'm wanting to blend something in. Or again, or if I com composited a different background in here, I would run that probably a little bit around my edge of her and anything just to help blend those two things together. Um, so blur tool for edges like that. When you are adding in something like that, then it's important to have your shadows. Like he's just sitting here, he's floating, right? He's not blended onto anything. Again, I haven't done any contrast or anything adjustments. I'll get into that later in my compositing series. But from this point, when I've got him on his own level, I would then put a layer below him, a fresh layer below him. Actually, I would do two layers below him and I will show you why. Um, the first thing that I would do is on the first layer below him, I would take a white brush at a low opacity, like about 20%, and I make it fairly large, just on white. And I basically, so I'm underneath him on a layer, and I'm going to go, I'm going to dot. So see how my brush is mostly over him and just a little bit showing in the edges? I'm going to dot around him like this. And you might think, well, why? But when you do that, can make it smaller around the ears. Again, it's hard to see because of where he is right now, but when you, if he was down below and you did this, and you can even then turn down the opacity of that, so I'll turn it right off, but as it, you watch as I bring it up, it sort of gives a separation between him and the background. It makes it more three-dimensional because somehow you're just adding this little glow around him that's making it look like there's some air space in between him and what's there. I'll just turn that off and on. And again, once it's down in the image and it's everything starting to come together, you'll really see how that little bit of highlighting around him makes a big difference. And then from there you would work on your shadows. So another layer that's below as well. I usually just do them on a just a black brush, a soft black brush. I usually set it to maybe 10 or 20 percent and I bring the flow way down to about 10 or 20 percent as well. And I start, so my light comes from this, from the left. And I would go, so I'm underneath him again, so it's not going to go on top of him. And I would start bringing out the shadow this way, right? Until I get it kind of roughly where he'll be throwing his shadow. And as you come in, you want it to be darker where he is. It's going to be a little bit under, just a little bit on this side. But it's mostly going to be dark where he is. And you just kind of figure where his shadow and, and feather that out. To create that shadow so he actually looks like he's sitting there. There's some shadow beneath him. You can try playing with blend modes on that. That's just on normal. Sometimes I'll do it on soft light. Now that totally disappeared on me. It's not totally gone. Um, sometimes soft light works, but it's not made it dark enough along the edges here. So most of the time I just leave it on normal. Sometimes you might want to multiply to darken it. Um, and again, if he was sitting in grass or whatever he would be actually sitting on, you would usually um, mask off a little bit of him on his layer to let the grass or whatever it is be overlapping him a little bit along his feet. I can't really do that on the mushroom because he's it's just a sort of a hard surface. But you would go along like this. If he was sitting in grass, you could just kind of 
delete some let's put this back up to a full flow i'd still keep it on fairly low like 20 percent and just you'd go along maybe 50 depends how fast you want to work it but you would you know if there was grass below him you would have you know, you'd kind of go like this and you'd see that would be grass that was showing underneath him and that just helps him look settled in what it is that he's sitting on so he almost looks like he's sitting in mud there now um, so those are the things that that are needed to make him look like now even though his colors don't match the picture he does now look more like he's sitting on the mushroom because he's blended in with his edges and that shadow makes a huge difference. If I turn off that shadow he's just floating there but as soon as you have shadow it grounds him in there and then you do your lighting and your contrast and your color adjustments to match whatever you're doing in the scene but it, I would just block it in kind of like this when I start and then I would have all his contrast adjustments um, as I start building in and doing my dodge and burn, I would dodge and burn him and all the different things that I would do when I start putting that together. So I hope that gives you a little hint on edges. That blur tool is a huge help. You'll just try that as you're putting images in. It doesn't take, doesn't have to be big, just this little tiny bit along those edges and it will make a big difference in how they just kind of blend into your background.